In shooting, we like to use a lot of acronyms, and today, Dave and I are going to talk about TMJ versus FMJ. What's this all about, and what does it mean? Let's talk about it. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than ammo.com. Chris, I understand today we're going to be comparing my favorite Stanley Kubrick movie to uh, a common jaw disorder. Oh, Dave, that was fantastic. Yeah, we're going to be talking about full metal jacket and total metal jacket today. And regardless of what bullets you like to shoot, make sure you click that link down in the description. Get that free $20 off coupon from here at ammo.com. And while you're down there, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button for us so we can get you some more amazing content. But yeah, we're talking about two different bullet types today that some people get really confused and uh, don't exactly know what the difference is. These are the basic target shooting bullets for semi-automatic firearms. Now, to be sure, there are more basic bullet designs than FMJ and TMJ, yep. like the lead round nose and the lead flat nose, but those are pretty much restricted to lever action rifle and revolver usage because mm -hmm. a semi-automatic requires that hard gilding metal exterior so the bullet can feed efficiently and prevent barrel fouling in semi-automatic and automatic firearms. Absolutely, Dave. And, you know, these are two classic designs. You'll see them all the time, typically in like target ammo or range ammo, whichever you have. But I've got some examples here. I got a couple 30 cals, a couple 308s. Uh, and you can see here in the camera, uh, it'll be on your this one right here. That is a, a full metal jacket where the other one, that's a total metal jacket. You'll see basically the difference, as the song says, is it's all about that base. Uh, the full metal jacket has an exposed a bit of lead on the bottom. That's what that silver bit was. And the total metal jacket is completely encapsulated. But the way that these bullets are created is actually very different. And that's why some guns prefer or are better with full metal jackets and others work well with total metal jackets. Yeah. Now, to be very sure, both bullets have solid lead cores. That's correct. Uh, the total metal jacket and well they could be named better they sound like they're the same exact thing but unlike the full metal jacket the total metal jackets jacket totally encapsulates its lead core that's correct so a tmj or total metal jacket came later the full metal jacket came first what it does is it completely adheres that thin metal copper jacket typically uh to the exterior of the lead core so it completely covers the bullet whereas a full metal jacket basically takes that jacket material and swages it on the bullet which leaves a little bit on the bottom that's still exposed lead that exposed lead on the bottom um two problems really associated with it that the the tmj pretty much fixes and that's yep. uh barrel fouling and, and lead exposure to your own lungs yeah, and this really came about a lot in uh, indoor police shooting ranges where we first saw this. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the full metal jacket came first. Uh, it came in the early 1900s, if my memory serves me correct, uh, and it was a Swiss gun manufacturer. But the full metal jacket, like you said, has that exposed lead at the bottom of it. And what we were seeing in these police shooting ranges was where they're doing all their qualifications and their target practice, there's a lot of fire. There's a lot of bullets being fired off. And what they were noticing was increased levels of lead in the air. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't particularly like breathing lead into my lungs. And so Spear was the first one that came out with the Lawman round that was a total metal jacket. And that was the first TMJ that really became popular on the civilian shooting market. Yeah, now the TMJ prevents hot propellant gases from from uh, evaporating lead off of the bullet's core, which in turn promotes a healthier shooting environment. And to be sure, if you're just, you know, everyday average ham and egg kind of shooter like us, going to the range once or twice a year and inhaling a little lead, probably not going to give you brain damage. But if you're posting up at indoor ranges, which are poorly ventilated pretty often, then the TMJ might, might spare you from some health problems. Yeah, and a lot of indoor ranges are now requiring total metal jacket ammunition because of that lead exposure issue. Now, I know that the EPA has a lot of you know stringent requirements on air filtration on indoor ranges, but during high volume shooting sessions, like what you would have for police qualifications, 
it just can't keep up. And that's why we have the Total Metal Jacket. It's very popular in handgun rounds, but it's also popular in match ammunition. Uh, this actually is a match bullet for a 308. It's my personal favorite, the 175, aka the Dwellet round. It gives you that very nice uniform match grade coating on the outside, but it does come with some problems. You might be thinking, okay, well, why isn't all ammunition TMJ? It isn't necessarily the best for every firearm. And Dave, you and I were talking about this before we got on the air. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the total metal jacket offers a lot of advantages. The the electrochemical process that puts the copper on the core one atom at a time, that makes a very concentric jacket, which is rotationally stable. The TMJ is not really able to put lead fouling inside of a barrel, which helps mm -hmm. to conserve accuracy in between cleanings. And furthermore, it keeps the base of the bullet undeformed as well, which is just going to improve its ballistic efficiency and, and make your shots a little more uh, consistent. Now, that said, the, the, the nature of the Total Metal Jacket's jacket makes it pretty thin, mm -hmm. which means a, uh, a ported compensator's port might shave a thin sliver of copper off of it as the bullet clears barrel. Yeah, Dave, you're absolutely right. And this is more common, I would say, in handgun, particularly like USPSA open shooters who typically have a compensator on their gun. They're going to typically predominantly shoot full metal jacket for that reason because the metal is going to be thicker, going to be harder, and it's not going to shave off on that comp. Now, of course, when you have that shaving coming back at your face, not necessarily a good day. Now, of course, you should all be wearing your eye protection while you're shooting, but still having metal flying back at you is not a pleasant experience. So uh, that's why, of course, if you have a compensator or a ported barrel, always be shooting FMJs out of that thing, and you should be just fine. But yeah, you, you really hit the uh, the nail on the head there, you know, hit the bullseye with the uh, the bullet. The really nice thin layering on these uh, TMJ bullets really makes it a very nice concentric match grade accuracy. And you will typically see higher accuracy with a TMJ, like you said, because of that uniformity as well as not only on the external part of the bullet, but as the base as well. So you're getting a uniform push on the back of the bullet. So it's very consistent. Yeah. So, uh, Chris, we're often asked about the, the whether either of these bullets would be suitable for, for personal protection. Um, obviously, the, the United States Armed Forces primarily mm -hmm. uses full metal jacket bullets in combat, yep. but that is not to say that you should favor it for, for home defense or self-defense, wherever you are. No, I agree with you completely, Dave. Uh, FMJs and TMJs really are not the best options for self-defense, especially since you are not you know, restricted by the Hague Convention, you can use expanding bullets, you can use jacketed hollow points, you can use soft points, uh, all of these wonderful things that, you know, expand, create larger wound channels, but also resist over penetration. So that's the big thing with FMJ bullets, or TMJ for that matter, is they're going to penetrate really, really well. Thing is, when you're in a self-defense situation, the last thing you want is over penetration. You don't want that bullet leaving the target and possibly hitting an innocent bystander or maybe even a family member if it's something that happens in the home. Uh, and that, of course, as I always like to say, every time you squeeze the trigger, there's a lawyer attached to that bullet. So make sure that when you're concealed carrying or when you're, uh, you know, loading up your home defense handgun or rifle, you're loading it with either, you know, jacketed hollow points or some type of an expanding or frangible bullet. Yeah, uh, and even if you were the last two people on Earth, you'd still want an expanding hollow point bullet because uh, oh, yeah. well, it's just designed to inflict greater damage to the target following impact. It, it widens outward, it exerts more of its energy in lateral directions, it increases its likelihood of overlapping with a terminal organ, and it yeah. just gouges out a wider and more injurious wound channel. So uh, it's going to neutralize the threat faster, and every second counts when someone's intent on doing you immediate bodily harm. Dave, you're completely correct on that. You know, you always want to make sure we're stopping the threat as quickly as possible in any self-defense situation. So make sure you load it up with jacketed hollow points. You can get those here at ammo.com. Make sure you, again, you click that link down in the description. Make sure you get your $20 off coupon. But uh, yeah, Dave, I think that pretty much sums it up for the most part for TMJ versus FMJ. Uh, any final thoughts from you? No, no, I think we're brilliant podcasters and we summed it up perfectly. If you want cleaner, more accurate performance, choose the TMJ. Do yep. not choose the TMJ if you have a ported barrel or a compensator. And uh, don't choose either of these for self-defense and you'll be Goldilocks. Couldn't have said it better myself, Dave. Really appreciate it as always. And we'll see you out on the range.